Uganda Professional Science Teachers Union is a union meant for science teachers in the country. We are well aware of the subjects that embrace science. Its major cause as a union is to look at uh, development and transformation. We are aware that today there is advancement in technology. Uganda is one of the countries trying to look at how it can beat up with the rest of the country in advancement in different areas of technology. Thank you so much. So here we have our app, it's called Your Soil App. And the kids, the SQME, the Soil Quality Monitoring Equipment, whereby we came up with this project because it was a problem whereby farmers, okay, in layman's language, imagine you have you have purchased your land maybe an acre and you're going to do farming for commercial production so yeah you have your piece of land so you are doing guess what of what kinds of crops to grow and then after growing them you realize that the yields and the money you invested are not adding up so what does our app and kit do our app is going to help you uh, connect with the kitchen and by once you put in this soil sensor into the soil uh, it, that, it determines the NPK levels and recommends you what kinds of plants you are going to grow so right now we are going to use the sample from the compost tumbler to see if the nutrients there are okay. So I'm putting the sensor and she's going to press the start button to determine the number of nutrients there. As you can see, it's measuring the nutrients in the soil. Then I'll press stop. When I press stop, you can see that the nutrient levels of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, they all have labels. And the recommendations, they're telling you that nitrogen is high, Phosphorus is high, potassium is high, and I've given you the fertilizer recommendations. They're saying avoid nitrogen additional applications, no phosphorus amendments, that is to say, phosphorus is high, so there's no need to add more. Even potassium is high, do not add any more. And then they've given you the suitable crops to grow, that is broccoli, cabbage, cauliflowers, corn, tomatoes, and peppers. My name is Chibumbi Samuel from Kainabi Secondary School. I'm presenting a no-cost hydroelectric generator that was, uh, that was designed to address a problem of power shortage in rural areas. This is how it works. Precious water enters from here, the turbine to enter the turbine and spins the turbine. The turbine spins and produces mechanical energy. Then this motor turns the mechanical energy into electrical energy. The electrical energy is, transfo is transported from the motor to the boost converter. The boost converter boosts the voltage so that it can light up the bulb. So, the reason why we chose this project among all the projects that were there, uh, this project was to help to improve on security and surveillance. And this can be helped used in security companies and also the future visions for it. We can use it in agriculture sector for spraying simple insecticides into our gardens. And also, there's a unique feature about our drone. It has the live video feed, whereby the user is able to get the action in the place where the drone is in real time. As you can see on our monitor here, the auto switch mode is, enabled, is, able by, is, is achieved by the use of the ultrasonic sensors that detects and calculates the distance our drone is from the ground. For example, in a distance of that is less than or equals to 15 centimeters, it turns into a car. And if the distance is above 15 centimeters, it will turn into a drone. My name is Mukasa Jail Joel, and this is Science in Action. Our project is a sick bay management system that was designed to improve and modernize health care provided in the school. It was made in order to properly manage the health records provided in the school and monitor the health progress among the students. When the nurses add a new prescription for a student, they are able to put in the necessary information, like the time and period that the student is supposed to come into the sick bay in order to take their prescription medicine. And they are able to monitor the, this progress. They are able to monitor the health progress of the student in such a way that when the student reports to the sick bay, in the required time to take their, 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 their medication, the nurse, is able, the nurse is able to record or mark him as taken every time he takes his dose 
or in case he misses his dose and does not appear, the nurse is able to mark him as miss. My name is Masanda Trevor from St. Maria Bullet Catend, Science in Action. So before you is a hand gesture controlled wheelchair. This was basically made for people with limited hand strength who can't use joystick controlled wheelchairs or traditional manual ones. So we decided to come up with this user friendly one and affordable one. So this is how it works. So this is basically the support case of our wheelchair. And this will be mounted on a glove on which the person can wear. Now, to move, a person just tilts the hand. Remember, it has the glove. Tilting forward, it will move forward behind, right, then even left. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Nam Shanisa. And I am Nama Top Shakira. And we are from St. Andrew Kabwa Gombe High School, Kawala. We are here to present a 3D holographic prototype, which is made out of recyclable papers to aid visual learning. So when a teacher comes to class, and he, he or she wants to share a video, like this video. So we are in class, and the teacher is going to share. He or she gets her mobile phone, and puts it here. It's going to display the image down there so the teacher can explain as the students are looking at what the teacher is explaining. This gives them more understanding of the concept that is being explained by the teacher. Nice time to have you all. My name is Samuel Kato Tomusime from Namungo Seed Secondary School, Mitiana. I'm here to present to you the upgraded integrated hydroponic system of farming, whereby we are able to grow crops on water instead of using the soil. There is a gland at the base of the brain behind the bridge of the nose, known as the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland secretes the ADH, the antidiuretic hormone, which is able to detect that there is no water. It makes the walls of the collecting duct permeable to the water. So, we are having the water sensor inside, which is able to detect that there is no water, sends the command to the adrenal for the water to come up. That's condition number one. Besides that, we can also talk to the, to the water pump. What do, what do I say when I need to talk to the water pump? Nicole, supply water. It's not supplying the water. Nicole, stop. It stops. I can use little products or little briquettes to, to prepare food that is, is much than that one you can use in making the charcoal. And these briquettes have helped us in reducing, in reducing the waste products in, from the environment, like this charcoal residues which have increased the dust in the environment leading to respiratory diseases. And this is Science in Action. This is Chibuli Secondary School presenting a project called the Automated Rain Shield Device. So a major challenge is majorly when it's raining, like the weather right now is actually threatening. So once the water is detected by the water sensor, it sends a signal to the Arduino chip whereby we sent a code. The code is run to the motor and the motor rotates the nylon cloth which is waterproof to cover the clothes until the rain is done or it's done raining whereby the water sensor will dry up and commands the nylon cloth to open to allow the clothes to dry again. <laughs> 